Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry On. Hello, and welcome to episode 57 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I'm recording from my home here in Virginia. Hello, everyone, and mommy. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. 2020. <laughs> I've already made the mistake of writing 19 in one of my books. Oh, I've already seen a warning about when you write your dates, don't just go one slash one slash 20 write it all out because somebody else can come back and fill it in with 2019 or 2021 uh, or 20 something like that so top tip everyone little, <laughs> yep <laughs> okay a little psa mm. so you're not feeling terribly well are you no i am gonna apologize ahead of time because i know i sound really weird and you don't sound really weird um, Oh well, I feel really my my head's all stuffed up in my, I I in my head I think I sound like a frog. You sound fine to me. Okay, but there there might be some sniffing and coughing that I'll have to hopefully edit all of it out so none of our listeners get to hear that in their ears. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, um, thanks everyone for joining us in the new year. We had a bit of a holiday in December. We only did one episode, right? Yes. Yeah, so back to normal schedule-ish, as much as the schedule as we do. Um, <laughs> and I just want to say a special thank you to a couple of people who said hello on the Ravelry thread recently. Uh, special thank yous to Jemmy and Mackenzie, and they are Midget Jemmy and Mac Die, respectively. They are both crocheters. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> although Mackenzie <laughs> has recently learned how to knit, and Jemmy is planning on learning how to knit. To learn how to knit. Well, keep on listening because you'll get some knitting hits, in, <laughs> not hits, in this uh, 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 podcast, yeah. as well as crochet hits. Yeah. All right, so you picked the BuzzFeed quiz because yeah, I'm not feeling well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you want to know my uh, reaction was when I opened it up? What? I went, oh, dessert. I I have too much dessert. I'm not ready for <laughs> dessert. And nothing looked appealing. <gasps> well, that, that can also be because I'm sick. Yeah, that They're must like, be because oh. you're sick. I mean, we did have a lot of, like, <laughs> sweets and chocolate and dessert over Christmas. But it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was an excessive amount. We didn't eat all of it, for one thing. No, but we ate it every day. We I usually don't eat sweets every day like that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, pants are all too tight. <laughs> right. Well, have we actually said what the quiz is yet? No. Oh, you can oh, say it. We know what your dominant personality trait is based on the desserts you eat. Desserts say everything about a person. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we did a dessert one recently too, but you couldn't remember it, so I, I probably. Don't but anyway, <laughs> I so I got. I don't even know if this is a personality trait. Okay, it says you're honest. When people need an honest opinion, you're the first person they come to. You're able to tell the truth in a nice way without sugarcoating it too much. Everyone knows you have their backs and their best interests at heart. You are honest. Yeah, I think, especially being the American at work with my, in my last <laughs> office, I was always just like, well, Allison will say it the way it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no beating around the bush. Uh, I got... You're kind. Being nice comes from a place of obligation and politeness, but being kind comes straight from the heart. Every word you say is genuine and true. You're very empathetic and can sense the moods of others with just a glance or a touch. Yeah. Um, maybe. I'm not sure about the just a glance or a touch, but... Yeah, well, that's a bit, that's a bit <laughs> much anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so but right. you know who, who who what's my uh my my I I got Kanga and Rue on my um oh on the picture for it picture. oh that's cute <laughs> I don't I don't even know I think mine must be from something from the TV whether it's let me see maybe it. reality TV sh- or something but it's a GIF and then the subtitle is honesty is important but it oh, looks I like some no sort idea. of reality TV show but I, I have no I have idea no who idea. it is no it's just an actress I think oh it's an actress yeah. Just the way it's set up, like, it looked like maybe one of those. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I gotta continue. Uh, more importantly, the desserts you pick. There weren't too many questions. Okay. So... No, there weren't. Thank goodness, because my pants would be even bigger if there were more questions. Uh, the, what cupcake did you pick? The chocolate one. Yeah, I looked at that. I almost picked that one. 
I'm imagining that could be like a chocolate cupcake with like a coffee flavored frosting on top. That would be good. Mm, um, or but or I picked, hazelnut? I picked, yeah, I picked the, um, the belt, the, the red velvet. Uh, because does that not normally come with like a cream cheese frosting? No idea. I'm not big well, on red velvet. I'm imagining it's cream cheese frosting because I love cream cheese frosting. <laughs> um, you do. And then what about the ice cream? The cake? You skipped the cake. I skipped the cake, sorry. Uh, the cake was more more chocolate. It's the chocolate mousse. Yeah, I picked the chocolate cake as well. And then um, the ice cream was the only one that had a little bit of chocolate in it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I picked that one as well. But because the actual ice cream itself looks like... I don't know. It's like a vanilla ice cream. ice cream. I don't know. It looks like it could be a pistachio ice cream. Mm. Like it has with, a slight with, with strawberries tinge. on it? With strawberries? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Why not? Um, but yeah, but the other options were vanilla ice cream with a bunch of rainbow sprinkles that taste like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Soft um, serve, like raspberry and vanilla. And then like and... strawberry pop or raspberry popsicles, maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, now, well, okay, what well, pie? There was no chocolate. No but chocolate. I, picked... so, <laughs> I think you picked the top left. No, I picked apple pie. Apple pie, hell. I oh, I picked the top left. Good apple pie. Because it looks like it could be a pumpkin pie, but I think it might... I don't know. It looks like it has like a caramel layer on top. The top a... left? Yeah, that looks like a pumpkin pie. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, what bakery treat? Chocolate chip cookies. Oh, I thought you might have picked donuts. Uh, I might have, but that was just... That was a little overwhelming to me right now. All those colors. <laughs> I, I, I went for the macarons. <laughs> those are always good, too. Cool. Okay. I cannot believe you're saying that you are can't think about dessert <laughs> you have mu- a way more s- s- sweet tooth i think you have a s- sweeter ear tooth than i do <laughs> career sweeter ear. A sweeter tooth. I have a, s- I have a sweet mouth tooth <laughs> yeah sweet sweet teeth uh-huh <laughs> uh, and i have right. less teeth than you do too so <laughs> so less each of teeth. them are even yeah because i got a couple of that were had to be pulled uh <laughs> but we both don't have ha- to never had any wisdom teeth. No. Yeah. Neither of highly, us had wisdom highly teeth. Highly evolved we are. Yeah, we are more evolved than the rest <laughs> of the family. <laughs> uh, right, uh, so you very kindly went through all of our FOs for the year. Will we do that first? A sure, little... but I'm not reading all of them. <laughs> do you want me to do it? <laughs> well, here, I have oh. my notebook. I mean, I, I suppose I could read mine. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So I had 19 projects, which was a lot less than last year's 25, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, and um, so one of them was crocheted. So I had six hat, no, seven hats, three shawls slash scarves, two pair, one mitt pair of mittens, two sweaters, three pair of socks, and two miscellaneous. And so and they then, were in, not what, in... What, what were my totals? You have that. 13. And last year? The year before, I mean? 20. Ooh, three. Ooh. <laughs> Not very productive at all. Nope. And so I, I, have did... the, I have the excuse of I was moving. <laughs> so I had two hats, one of which was knit. Four scarves and the shawls. Two mittens. Two mittens. Yeah. One sweater and four miscellaneous things. So um, yeah, we each had a, a swapped I had a crochet, you had a knit. Yeah, and we did it. That doesn't, that feels like it was, I don't know, looking back on the year, reading some of that stuff, I was just like, was that really within the last year? <laughs> um, I think, like, uh, Sam and I were watching the, what was it called, Big Fat Quiz Show of the decade they did. Uh-huh. So we're looking back in the last 10 years, and just, even that stuff, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, I lived through all that, really? <laughs> yeah, and, and I was saying to Sam, with the last 10 years, 10 years I was still an, an an adult essentially like 10 years ago it wasn't like 10 years ago it was so long ago I was just a kid 10 years ago you were legally an adult yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> 10 years so you, is a long time it was it is a long time it went by in a flash for me so yeah. do we read off all the the patterns if you want to okay I had a slouchy hat the Lush Cardigan, My Blips Infinity Scarf, Andean Chulo Hat, Gumball Purse Socks, Sheet Mittens, Snow Heed, 
Hat, Roadside Beanies, Zweig, Baker Street Purse Socks, As the Leaves Begin to Fall, Hat, Chevron Baby Blanket, Triangle Stockings, Sagita Shawl, Police Box Slouch Hat, Bubbly Brioche, Coraline Socks, and then one more, uh, the second Leaves Hat that I made in December that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, I see. So I had a Pussy Hat, a Wind Hat, Temperamental Artist Shawl, Honeycomb Cowl, Ludiola Stole, uh, my own Tweel Infinity Scarf. Actually, I have the mm. full Infinity Scarf, Tweel Infinity Scarf, and a Tweel Cowl. So actually, I did oh. an extra one. Oh, Sky extra. Blue Fingerless Mittens, Nola Binding Mittens, Macor Batant Sweater, Puffin Pillow, Star t- Stitch Baby Blanket, Expose Your Balls uh, Yarn Holder. <laughs> And the Christmas stocking. <laughs> so, well, yeah. we did pretty well. Yeah. Nice. How many of yours weren't color worked? Most of them. Most of them were color work. Were not. Really? Um. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm going to count the ones that were. You got the Inde- Indian Chula hat is one. The Snahid hat. Roadside beanie. Uh, the leaves one is or not? It's not. It is. It is. And you did two of them. Uh-huh. Okay, two of them. Uh, the police box has a little bit, but I guess not that much. Uh, the imbl- the blips? No? That has a little bit, if you want to call it color work. Sagita? The stripes? <laughs> Depends on what you what you mean yeah. by color work. <laughs> Sheet mittens? Definitely. Coiling socks? Definitely. Triangle stockings? Definitely. So, I mean, that's like eight things. And I didn't. Yeah. I didn't count the like. Uh, maybe just stripes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's I decent guess amount. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I get bored with just with just one color. <laughs> All right. So, what what are we working on now? Oh, our whips. I'm still working on my East Coast Girl cardigan, but I'm almost to the the ribbed the rib. Um, on the bottom. What's that called? The waist. The the. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. The hem on the bottom. The rib uh-huh. hem, whatever. And but my um tape tape measure was not always handy in a place I could get to very mm-hmm. easily because I knit a lot this a lot on the airplane and also while we were in Edinburgh during our down times, and so I, I didn't want to like knit past the the called for length and mm-hmm. then have to rip back because you know so I, I i stopped it so i wouldn't have to take out the measuring tape every every few rows or whatever mm-hmm. uh but i think I'll, I'll probably be able to do that this coming week start at least start on the the rib binding the rib nice. the ribbed what am i trying to say the the, the rib bottom the hem the yeah and then is it just the sleeves after that and then you're basically done after that, <laughs> basically done. Just, just, just the sleeves. Done. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeves. Yes, I have to pick up the, for the sleeves, and then there is I have to pick up for the the button band. Uh, and remind me what yarn yeah. you're using. I am using oh, the, the French one. The biche, yeah, the biche and bouche, the petite lamb's yeah. wool. So that's that's um. I can't wait to be finished because it's start, starting to blind me because it's so dark Mm -hmm. it's a dark navy yeah it's a dark navy but at least it's not black Mm -hmm. because that would blind me even more my second whip is a new one it's um the bubbly brioche beanie more brioche (laughs) well it's this um jen tolan gifted me the 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 beanie Mm -hmm. the beanie pattern after after i finished the shawl like we, everybody has leftovers, so I was like, oh, you can make matching hats for your, yeah. your shawl, and it's such a nice yarn. I didn't. It's a, you know, it's it's a great way to use it up because otherwise it would just sit in my stash and I wouldn't know what to use it uh-huh. for. Uh, so this is the ancient art fibers sock NATO yarn, but it is the same that you used for the shawl. Yeah. It's the same. It's the leftovers. So I'm making it in the smaller uh, size because I, I think. Um, 
I don't know if I have enough for the larger size. And also, I'm such a loose knitter. The larger one would probably not sit very well. I feel like more often than not, you, head. you make hats and then you're like, this is too big. <laughs> <Then it's> too <laughs> small. Yeah, so that's why I'm making it smaller. And besides, like there are lots of people with heads smaller than me that I could, uh, I could gift it or something. Mm-hmm. And my third whip is... I actually started it right before we left for Edinburgh. And it's the... They're purse socks, but they are a particular pattern. I It's a $1 pattern that I got from Susan B. Anderson, mm-hmm. and it's called Smooth Operator Socks. They are, um, they are it's, it's a pattern specifically for self-striping yarn, mm-hmm. and it has a afterthought heel, and it's supposed to be so that, you know, it doesn't interrupt your... Stripes. your stripes but i think what's the most interesting about it she has a, a a technique for picking up the yarn um where the gusset is so you don't have holes but mm-hmm. i still have a hole on one side yeah so obviously i didn't do it right so that was nice because usually i have to sew in the holes because it's usually a hole there where the heel and the heel meets the, the i feel gusset. like i also want the socks that you make me i i, I get gaps at the toes at the yeah. toes. Oh yeah, I kind of fixed that. So I always had problems with a ladder right there. If I have two, like, um, if I do my yarn decreases mm-hmm. next to each other, they're usually, you know, I do a decrease and then I have to change to the next needle and I do a decrease and then go to the bottom, to the end of the row, do another decrease and then I have to change. So each, each of the decreases is at the end of the needles because I have two needles. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, the two needles would pull or something, and I would always have uh, a ladder right there. Yeah, I think where that's, the... that's what it is. Yeah, so lately when I make my socks, I do a knit and then a decrease. Go to the end, a decrease and a knit. So that seems to help it. So there's not as much of a gap, mm-hmm. uh, the gaping okay. there. Yeah. So, yeah, so I've been doing that. Yeah, I haven't had um, mommy-made socks in a while. Well, maybe these these will be for you. Then. I do have a lot of a lot of your socks. I I like the color the the. It's just uh, I just remember that the, like, the the colorway was called Ever After. It was cute. Yeah, because it's like yeah. a. It, they're kind of princessy color, like pink, purple. I don't know why they. It then they're not even. I don't know why I say princessy, but Ever After just seems like the perfect <laughs> name for it. Uh huh. But I I look at it as like oh, it was kind of jimbery ish, like the girl mm-hmm. side of the jim- <laughs> <laughs> and you know how how much I love Jimbury. Not that they're around anymore. Yeah, they're not around and you don't have small children. <laughs> no, but they might be coming back. Um, What kind of whips do you have? So I've got the one I'm working on as I speak. It's the um, Distant Star by Cat Golden. I really haven't, I haven't done that much since I talked about last time because <laughs> little I didn't do any crocheting over Christmas just because... Um, well, I, for one thing, I didn't have any projects that were just sort of mindless ones. I suppose this one was a bit mindless, but, uh-huh. you know, there's so much going on that I just didn't feel like I... I brought two projects with me, and I just didn't pick either of them up because there was lots going on. So I, I haven't got that... Got, I have not gotten that much this, further. This is the one that looks like a kite. Yeah, it's the one that looks like a kite and that I... The, the goblin the, stitch. Yeah, goblin, goblin. And I, I still... I tried emailing the designer, and I don't didn't get a response mm-hmm. so i'm just gonna carry on but the thing is so the right side um is it a, has a pretty nice angle to it but my left mm-hmm. side is all like wobbly and i don't know i, I like i think because the stitches are quite loose there's a lot of i can pull it quite a lot so i think it might block out okay do you see that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I think, yeah, I could block it straight, but I just I just don't know if that's just how it is. Oh. Well, I mean, it's the holidays. Maybe she, she'll answer you afterwards. Mm, I messaged it's like a while. Like, just after our last episode? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm working on that. I'm also... The other project that I brought and then didn't work on, which I don't even know if I should mention it or not, is a shawl of my own design. Hopefully. And it's going to be a gasp triangle shaped shawl. You didn't like but... triangle shaped shawls. 
I know. <laughs> but I'm using the yarn from my um, pleated cardigan. So it's um, the Knit by Numbers, the John Arbin. Uh huh. So it's that mustardy color. Yeah, sort of mustardy goldenrod. Because I have lots of it left uh -huh. over. Uh -huh. So just doing. You have enough for a big shawl? Yeah, I mean, I have one whole hank plus extra from. Oh, wow. You have a lot left. Yeah, I had a lot left. Um, and I'm so I'm doing the linen stitch, which is, or the moss stitch. So that's a single crochet and then a chain and then single crochet and then you single crochet into the chain space. So it uses a lot less yarn. But the mm -hmm. idea was to use, do that stitch throughout. And then use some double crochets, front post double crochets to create a texture on top to be able to write like letters with. But so I'd mapped out how I was going to make each letter. But with the gauge, it's there's more, it's wider. They're turning out wider than what I want. So I need, I'm going to rip out and try to fix, make them narrower. Mm hmm. So I'll maybe do your. So when I chart it out in my notebook, they should look skinny, too skinny, because once I mm -hmm. work them out, they'll fatten up again. Mm -hmm. So is that is that yarn easy to rip? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it might catch a little bit, but I I had to rip out a lot of it with the cardigan as well. Oh, that's true. Um. But it's definitely not one that I can just sit down because I really have to. I like, I really have to concentrate on it, even when I know what I'm doing. Like have it all tried it out, and now like having to figure out how to make them skinnier. So we're getting that. And then the last thing I haven't actually started, but I thought I would mention it because it's part of a Cal um, being hosted by Ifa Ni. I, her first name is definitely Aoife. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's N-I, just the second name. But she's a mm -hmm. designer that I might have mentioned before. Cause she she mostly does Tunisian crochet. So she's having mm -hmm. a 2020 cal um, of her own designs. And I already knew that I wanted to make one of her shawls, the Didanen. Didanen. Ah, <laughs> and it is it's a Tunisian rectangle shawl. And with lace weight yarn, so I, I th how do you spell it? D E space D A N A double N. It's in our notes. Um, okay. The link. But yeah, so it's just a, a sort of short rectangle shawl. But I, I I I assume it would be you could just lengthen it, and the the motif is sort of like tri triangles. Hmm. It's kind of lacy, yeah. I guess, like a large uh -huh. lace pattern. But so I bought. The lace weight yarn at Perf. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember, it was Giddy Aunt, Aunt yarns in ultra lace. It was so sort of. It was the the yarn where we were having the puce versus mauve oh. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, because it's it's got like the sort of purpley colors as well as like a well that well that green with all the sort of you think um, the lace patterning will show through all the the color dye. I don't know. I mean the colors. They're not. They're. It's decently subtle, because it's a, it's a darker sort of yarn. I just added the link to the yarn to the notes, um, and with the Tunisian, because you're doing the return passes, it distributes the colors better than regular mm -hmm. crochet. Mm -hmm. So I hope <laughs> so, <laughs> but I couldn't really like. I mean, I guess I could look for more different different um, lace weight yarn, but I have a hard had a hard time finding like lace weight when I well at the at the festival. And looking at other people's projects, other people have done it in colors as well. Oh yeah, this one's pretty cool. <laughs> it almost looks like a by raptor. It almost looks like a quilt. <laughs> because of the the color the way it pulls, it almost looks like color blocks. Raptor. It's like the it's on the first page. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a really neat pattern. Very nice. Yeah, so I'm planning on doing that. The cow starts on the 6th, but it's only running for like, I say only, six, I think it's running oh. for like six weeks, which probably isn't long enough for me to finish <laughs> it unless that's all I worked uh -huh. on. So, but I wanted to make that pattern anyway. I, I'd bought that yarn mm. to make that pattern and she's hosting the cow of her pattern. So I was like, oh, might as well just start it. And even if I don't finish, then, you know, 
Yep, at least you participate. I'll have a... Yeah, exactly. Or you can be like me with my bubbly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you, you did I finish did. Your I, bubbly, like, right? By the skin of my teeth, I finished it on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what about... Well, I know you have an FO because uh-huh. you just mentioned it. Um, my FO, I finished it in Edinburgh while I was with you. It is the the leaves begin to fall pattern, oh, my second, second one. But I actually, we worked the, re, re, reworked the chart. Like I redid the chart because I, I wanted to use fingering weight rather than sport weight. Uh-huh. And yeah, it's, is it only, it's a free pattern. So I think it was only one side or size or something like that. So yeah, so uh-huh. I made my leaves bigger, or I don't know, but you know, per yeah. per 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 square, they're they're bigger because. Uh-huh. So um, and then I had to do some fiddly stuff with the crown, um, uh-huh. but I think it would look really good with a pom pom. So I haven't done. I still have to block it. It's yeah, yeah. So I still have to block it and make a pom pom, and I have plenty of yarn to make a pom pom. And I didn't have a didn't have a pom pom maker with me in Edinburgh. Otherwise, I would have made it there. But since I've been home, um, I haven't really had the time because you know, got sick and there's laundry to do and and you know all that fun stuff that you have to deal with when you've been away for ten days. So, but I'm really happy with it. I, I like I like the subtle color, the colorations of of the, the leaves. What are those? Is that the yarn from yours? Like, yes. can you tell? But in revert. Did you do yours like in mostly the purple color? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's a bit of a slouchy at the yeah. back. Mm-hmm. Nice. My FO is the thing I don't have anymore. <laughs> so for the craft oh, yeah, that's right. gift swap, which I I think I must have mentioned it on the podcast. You have. Um, yeah. I know I've talked about it to you because I've had to do it secretly because <laughs> I couldn't give anything away. Um, uh, so I had gotten Lindsay, who is and then there was Morgan on Instagram and I made her three little pouches using three different yarns, all like wool yarns in three different sizes using three different techniques. Like that's the kind of thing that I, I don't know what, like just, Oh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, so the smallest one was crocheted, the long one, which I had popped some like pens in some fun pens was knitted. And then there was a larger one that was, I did Nula binding. So did you use the same yarn? I can't remember. So so because it was three pouches, three different yarns, two colors per pouch. So they all use the same colors and yarn, mm-hmm. but in different combinations. Oh, okay. So I think the the crochet, the little one was brown and teal. The long, the knitted one was like lilac and teal, and the big one was brown and lilac. I'm. I'm assuming you took pictures before you sent it off. Yeah, I've taken pictures, so I'll, I'll, I'll have pictures and share pictures and put on Instagram and stuff. But I hadn't shared it up until now because I was waiting for Lindsay to open them. Oh, and she's opened so. Them. Oh, and and yeah, she's opened them now, and I was extra proud as well of doing the lining. <laughs> oh, I was so nervous about doing the zippers uh-huh. and like the lining because I did. Oh, I did a lining for my little like intarsia crocheted pouch that was um phase pattern uh-huh. and i i done that for that and, and it's fine but i was like i'm giving these to somebody <laughs> like Ooh, how am i gonna do this so yeah i met i managed to do like little zipper tabs at the end mm-hmm. so the zipper was all like completely in case and the lining is like not they're probably all slightly too big for the pouch mm-hmm. maybe one's too small like they're not exactly exactly like fit it in but but it's, it's good enough. And I used really cute fabric as well. And yeah, so I was really proud of that. I'm proud of you too. Yeah, I had to do, I like cobbled together a couple different tutorials from online and then did like a sort of mock up with some scrap fabrics just to like try to visualize <laughs> what it was I was supposed to be doing because I was doing them opposite. Oh, because the tutorials I found online were just like how to make a zippered pouch. Mm-hmm. Because I was doing it as a lining, I was like, okay, I need to make sure, the, like, make sure the zippers on the out, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> on the outside so it can go in the inside, uh-huh. and then I just hand stitched them into the pouch. Very clever. Good job. Yay. Uh, yeah. So now that it's January, 
we've got our cal coming up in less than a month this month so that's our archive cal which is going to be starting on the 24th of january so you still have a bit of time to think about things and the idea of the cal is that you make things using patterns which have been in your archive or in your library for a while three ish years or more um yeah, just give you a chance to actually look at some of the things that you favorited a while ago and just never got around to because God knows it's hard enough trying to decide what to make from the patterns that you favorited in the last like month, <laughs> let alone from ever. Uh, um, and so I think we both know what we might be doing. Yes, I will be yeah. doing The Endless Rose Cowl by Jeffrey Hall Wall. And right. this was in my interweaves. Uh, spring 2015 magazine. I've already had it out, and I think yes, I, I oh yeah, and I've already uh printed out the, you know, made a copy of the the chart because it is color work. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise! Nice. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> I've I've already made the group the thread on our Ravelry group. So if you are joining in on the cow. Uh, you can chat with us there, tell us what you're going to make, we can help you decide if you can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you want to use hashtag archive cal, cal being K-C-A-L, because it's knitting and crocheting, um, on Instagram or whatever, that's cool too. Uh, so yeah, that will be starting on the 24th. And it's really casual, like, whips aloud, um... You don't have to finish anything. <laughs> just just get crafting and have a chat with us. Yes. Cool. So, yeah, I'm excited. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, I, I'm going to do that blanket, remember? Is oh, the, yeah, like, yeah, 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 sort of, the, yeah. So I've ordered the, the yarn box. for it already um, because, you know, say, January sales. I think, I don't know if it's a bigger thing here. Like, you, you get, like, your Black Friday sales here as well now. Uh -huh. But... The January sales, like after New Year's and Christmas, are like uh -huh. massive. Oh, well, that means there's always after Christmas sales. Yeah. I'm using stash yarn. I can't remember what I decided on, but I think I've already set it aside and have mm -hmm. decided. So I can't tell you what it is because I don't remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, right. And I wanted, to, so Yarny Bits and Bobs, I, I wanted to mention um, because obviously I got to send away my craft bank present but i also received one. Oh, nice um so I, I received one from cat i think her name is and she had messaged me beforehand to say did i want a surprise or not and i said that i didn't mind surprise but if she had patterns in mind that she wanted to make then she could send me some and i could just say which ones i preferred because i know it can be hard like just not knowing someone being like i'm just gonna make you something and hope you like it <laughs> um <laughs> And so what she ended up making me was a hat that I, was one of the hats that I said I liked. Um, it was a February hat by Kate Gagnon Osborne. Uh, uh huh. But it has like a really dense fluffy pom-pom on the top. Uh huh. And sort of like textured stitches all around the edges. And she used bear and sheep's clothing yarn in a sort of gray blue. And I can't find it right now. Oh. <laughs> No. Edit, edit that out. I've already worn it. I've already worn it. it. Um, <laughs> and she also gave me this little um, oh, nice. zipper pouch. Little pouch. Did she make that? Uh, no, somebody else. Oh, I had the card and now I can't find it. I think it's used. It's made using some sort of remnant scraps of something, something. Cute. Yeah. So I had well, a hat. Uh, do you know? As well. Do you know what the name of the pattern was? February hat. Oh, you did say that. I'm sorry. I bet... I, I have favorited a lot of her patterns, so I wonder if it's one of them that I... And while while I'm on it, I might as well just say what other things I got for Christmas. Oh, from... it's in it's in her Year of Hats Yeah, Year collection. of Hats. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, yeah, because I got other Yarny Bits and Bobs from you, slash the family, slash real you, um, <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> um... So you could probably tell me more about my presents, but got some yarn from Paradise Paradise Farm, <laughs> which you said is in Virginia, mm -hmm. a family family farm. So it's a 
natural gray. Did you say hand spun? Yes, hand spun. Ooh. So it's not not dyed, but hand spun. Mm, yeah, it's like a dark gray. Um, Does it smell nice and sheepy? I see you smelling it. No. No? It doesn't really smell particularly sheepy, but uh, you gave me the um, little brochure. Yeah, I think so. I think the one that I got you has mohair in it. Doesn't say it. Literally doesn't say. I know, but is there like a? He <laughs> yeah, was he was it, like telling me everything, and I think it has a little bit of mohair in it. Yeah, it it, it has like a little bit of a <laughs> like a haze. A, yeah, a little bit of a haze. He's like, if 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 it's a G, it's this. If it's a D, it's that. And does it have like a letter or something like that on it? There's literally Somewhere. nothing. Oh, I think. <laughs> Was there a tag on it before? Uh, was, maybe there was a tag no, on there's it. There's no yeah. tag on it at the moment. Um, <laughs> but that is very soft. Yeah, it, it must have something else in it because it, it, it does have like some sort of softness to it. And then I you like also it. got me a case full of interchangeable crochet hooks. Knitter's Pride. Yes, so they're they're pretty. They're, they're really they're pretty. All, the colors all wooden all... and dyed wood. Um, and they have the nice pointy... Are... Yep, and the joints are top. nice and smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I started, I replaced it because I was just using a plastic hook with um, for my distant star. Uh-huh. So I've, I'm now using the size 5.5. 5, and it's very green. nice. It's much better than the plastic one. has a nice, like, weight to it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the tips being pointy are good because I've got, I have three wooden ones from Knit Picks. Knit Picks. And the tops are very smooth, blunted. Blunt, yeah. Yeah, so for this project, for the distant star, it will probably be fine because I'm working into like really big holes. Uh-huh. Um, but for other stuff, the, the blunt doesn't really work as well. So yeah, and now I've got like a million cords because I've got <laughs> the cords that you gave me uh-huh. when I first started doing the Tunisian. And then more cords that you gave me because I needed long cords. And then the cords <laughs> that came with the, the set. Are they? Can I think you can use the the picks cords with the knitter's pride? Uh, yeah. No, I think I think so. Yeah. So that's good. Mm-hmm. So everything I have is is interchangeable, which is very handy. Now, uh, now your sis your sister's of uh, Emily wants her needle set back because she's been into the knitting as she's well. She's starting to knit because I took them I took them back from her. I was like, you're not using these. I took them back from her. <laughs> And I think they were a Christmas or a birthday present. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so she's like, can I have that back? And like, um, uh, it's not complete we, she, anymore. She, she should be a, a guest on one of these calls. She should. Episodes. I don't uh, know how we would do that, but. But she would have to be here with me. Maybe. With a microphone. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm just going to send her some metal, t- metal uh, uh, a full set of metal ones. Metal now that ones? she's more metal metal knitting needles because the ones I got her she was still beginning it was I got her wood ones because it's easier for beginners to use wood uh, I see and um yeah because I, I I still have some of them I just don't know it's not a complete set anymore I've like lent some of the wood ones out to people and, yeah. <laughs> you gave you, you didn't just take back her Christmas present you took it back and then you gave some away <laughs> And some are attached to projects or whatever. So. Um, but you've got some yarny bits and bobs as well. Uh, yes. So, what are you looking at? <laughs> you. We, on one of our days, in, days Edinburgh. In, in Edinburgh, where we didn't have a whole lot of activities, we walked over to Be Inspired Fibers. Fi- fibers. And I don't really know anything about the shop. I didn't do any research. <laughs> I just we we all it was it was drizzling, and we all just arrived there like wet rats. <laughs> <laughs> like wet rats. Yeah, and by all, you, she does, you do mean all because it was all oh, because the whole family. I, I don't know why I, they all wanted I, to come. They all I don't to come. know why did they want to come with us? And the, the place was so tiny. Like I just I was I thought it was just going to be me and you and maybe Emily. Yeah. And then Madeline's like, oh, I want to come. And then your dad's like, oh, yeah, I'll come too. And then she's like, why? <laughs> so I was a little annoyed at that because um, it's not always easy to shop. Where's your dad? <laughs> when your dad's around. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's very typical, like, man shopping. You know, he doesn't want to browse. He doesn't want to taste high. He's like, what do you need? This good? Is this good? Well, this one. Okay. If you don't want that, then we'll take that. Okay. We're done. Bye. Okay, let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Um, 
But yeah, it is it is a very small shop. It's south of the meadows, so it was within walking distance of where we were staying for Christmas. And I have only been to this shop maybe once or twice because it's not that close to where I live. Mm-hmm. Um, Ginger Twist is closer to where I live, and if we had gone there, we definitely wouldn't have all fit in that shop. Like <laughs> it's too too small. So this one's a little bit bigger than the Ginger Twist, but it, it's still pretty small. And what space there is is like completely crammed. It's with like the... the size of a bedroom, but with tall ceilings. Yeah, um, and it's 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 very like it is crammed with stuff. Like it's it's, it's a bit disorganized. There's like yeah. bins of yarn and like yarn still in their bags and, and, and like they're, yeah, they're still in the original bags. <laughs> like uh-huh. oh, <laughs> <laughs> but. The, the woman, I don't know what her name, she was very, very helpful. Uh-huh. She helped you find the yarns that you needed and the colors, yep. colors so, you needed. May. Yeah, I think like, her name's May. Yeah. Basically, I want to knit The Lovage by Marie Wallen, and it's a, uh, like a Shetland type sweater. Mm-hmm. And um, I, w- I originally I wanted Jameson and Smith, but they didn't have that, so I went with the jameson spindrift which is a different company but they have you know they're similar Mm -hmm. are their yarns more more the color seems more um more rustic yeah yeah than the jameson i think i feel like the jameson and i mean i may be wrong but the jameson and smith has more more brighter colors more brighter colors and and the the jameson seemed like more like heathered like maybe they were using darker wool. Oh, uh, I don't know, but I know the Jamesons and Smiths. They has it has heathered colors too. Mm, okay. But anyway, I'm I'm happy with what I ended up with. It wasn't exactly what I was thinking mm-hmm. of. Yeah, but I wasn't I I wasn't gonna go with the original colors anyway. And plus, the original the original yarn that the sweater calls for has been discontinued anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So um, I was very happy, and it fit in my luggage barely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, the shop the shop's nice. It's got lots of different brands, arm brands, and hand dyed yeah. yarns. And I saw they she um, had some uh, re- Retrosaria. It's that Portuguese brand. Oh, the modem one that you like? Y- yeah, that I still haven't used, but <laughs> <laughs> they had she had like different different. Um, Yarns from them. Yeah, and she had some Zyra Ball uh-huh. and uh, Skin Queen. I think some Ching fiber I saw, Hedgehog fibers. Yeah, it was, it was a it was a good variety. It was just a little uh, claustrophobic with all the people shop. in there. And by all yeah, the people, I mean our ha- family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't help. And the fact that we we're all dripping wet didn't help either. Yeah. And right. but we were all dripping wet, and then I got really hot because it was like it started getting humid. I was like, like taking my jacket. I was like, oh my god, I'm so hot. <laughs> it is dripping everywhere. Uh, uh, it would have been nicer if there was less people. So I had something for favorite things, uh-huh. and that was just to say, I've set up my 2020 bullet journal. <laughs> I started with a fresh journal, which I haven't really done probably since my first one because I've just I just start the like I don't start a new notebook in a new year like I just uh-huh. keep going but I, I managed to um, space out or what's what's the word I'm looking for I don't cram know cram in the rest of the year yeah I, I crammed <laughs> in December into the last like few pages so that I could start January with a new notebook and I've got a lovely knit sonic notebook nice it's, it's the same it's the Lush term notebooks that uh-huh. we both like to use anyway oh but it has a pencil a pen Loop. oh yeah so that. I've, I've okay, put the it. little pen thingy oh, sticker Oh, you put that in? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the matching color, like the dark teal. But it's, yeah, it's the, the dot the dot grid, which I like on the inside. Uh-huh. And um, I like her little tagline, which says recording daily life, because that obviously mm-hmm. works for a notebook and her whole sound thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I've set it up, and I've gone even more, like, like minimal and some of my other notebooks like mm-hmm. taking it back to the basics of, cause I think the whole idea of a bur- bullet journal the when you see like all the like fancy bullet journal spreads like online where they like have like illustrations and hand calligraphy and all these different boxes I think it really steps away from the original 
idea of the bullet journal, which is fine. I think the idea of a bullet journal is that you make it work the way it works for you, and it's really adaptable. But you, yeah, you know what I think when I see all those pretty fancy yeah. who has the time for spreads? that spreads. Number one, who has the time for that? I was like, number two, it's like, what a waste of paper. <laughs> it's like you can put way more information <laughs> than what what you know what drawing does. Yeah, um, I I did start my uh, my January. Like in the it. middle of my notebook. Uh-huh. Yeah. Our, I mean, I do like some pretty pages with like headings, but so like my my look ahead for the the year, I've done a nice little heading, but it's still mm-hmm. decently sparse. And I I have also taken an idea for a mood map. <laughs> so I've got it's a grid for the whole year, and then cuz I've got all uh-huh. these stiff, like colored pens, so each pen or each color from red red for really happy and dark blue for really sad so for each day i can color it in so but this is my your my look year idea. yeah uh-huh. yeah i it's it's more i don't really i don't have i used to blah 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 i used to do a lot of like weekly stuff to do, to do lists and stuff i haven't really been doing that that much anymore so it's mostly just a recording of daily life and then mm-hmm. and then my appointment calendar mm-hmm. basically um, yeah, like, so, yeah. But I was going to say, um, I, I used to set up, like, yeah, a week's worth mm-hmm. on, like, a spread. But I'm gone back, I've gone back to not prescribing myself to those spaces. So I'll just do it for the day, essentially. So I just set it up for the day, for the next day. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of that day, for the next day after that. And using it, yeah, as, as the to-do list, or just the bullets and notes and maybe what happened that day if I want to as well. Hmm. But. Yeah, I um and also like I have a lot of children. Mhm. And yes. trying to keep oh. track of because your know, dad's always asking me cuz he'll um a lot of times when we travel or if 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 you guys are coming to visit us, you know, there's all the flights and then our I'm going to visit other people, there's always like all this flight information. He's always asking me when are you flying out? What day? What? And so I have like all the flight Im- information in my notebook too, because sometimes it's just easier to open up a notebook than to look like past in my emails where where all that information is. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of that kind of stuff goes in there too. So right. I like my bullet journal too, but I like your pretty one. You like what? That's my cute. Pretty one. Your pretty one is nice because <clears throat> it's, it's brand new and it's got the Nick Sonic thing on it. Oh and... yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's totally the color I would have picked for myself as well. Uh, that's good. Okay, well, I can do my spiel. Yes, please like, do my spiel. Okay. Um, right, so you can find the show notes for this episode and every other episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. Our Instagram is kcacypodcast. My Instagram is Allison here. My mom's Instagram is upstate underscore viv. You can listen and subscribe and like and comment and review and blah, blah, blah on iTunes or on YouTube or anywhere else that you get all your podcasts. Follow our, or join our group on Ravelry. Just look for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast in the groups tab. And you should definitely join us for the Cal on Ravelry and on Instagram. And if you want to buy us coffee, you can do at coffee, ko-fi.com slash KCACY podcast. Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry on. Happy New Year!